Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one in our series, Breaking Down Barriers. My name is Chris Igwe, and Breaking Down Barriers is inspired by my book, Breaking Down Barriers, My Journey from a Small African Village to the World Stage. And what I do is I take you through a few thoughts and ideas that have allowed me to get to where I am today in my life, my world, my career, and based on my experience. These short videos really just address one or two topics, one or two ideas or themes that I want to take you through and for you to take away in your own life. So what's today's topic going to be around? Well, the title is Work Hard, Play Hard, Rest Hard. Work Hard, Play Hard, Rest Hard. Now, on the one hand, you might say, well, that's obvious. I work really hard. But then I'm going to ask you the question, because we all work hard. I hope we do anyway. Even if you're a genius, even if you were super intelligent in whatever you do, you still work very hard at it because trust me, your level of ingenuity, success means that you have to take others with you to get to where you want to be. Otherwise you get frustrated. So you work hard, yes, but are you one who plays hard? And more importantly, are you someone who rests hard? Because resting is almost the opposite of work hard. But I like to say it's not the opposite, it's part of working hard. Because you see, we all work hard to get to wherever we want to be. And today in particular, we live in a world of crowded spaces. And I don't mean physical crowded spaces where we find ourselves in, in the metro system, in the railway system, in trains, in airports, on planes. What I mean is your chosen field the one where, let's say, you do as your job or your entrepreneurial adventure or whatever it happens to be, the company you run, the business you run, the team you run, these are crowded spaces. Why? Because a lot more people are doing it. Now, I remember, for example, when I first became a retail consultant, so advising retailers and brands in their international strategy, expansion, and of course, growth. When I started that maybe some 20 years ago or so, even more, there were very few of us who were doing it. Most people were in corporate. They were working in their companies as head of real estate or head of retail or whatever it happened to be. Today, there are so many more who are retail advisors doing the same as I've been doing for a long time. That is a crowded space. Podcasts. Podcasts, as we know, have become so much more successful, so much more available, accessible. I started doing podcasts about two years ago, entitled Global Voice of Retail, where I interview exclusively focused on CEOs, chairman, founder, managing directors. Not the easiest group of people to get to speak, but that's what I wanted. Podcasts are all over the place. Even these YouTube channels. I started my own YouTube channel about two and a half years ago now. Hundreds of videos later, almost 200 videos. But there are a lot of YouTube channels, a lot, lot of YouTubers out there. How do you distinguish yourself? How do I distinguish myself in a crowded space? I'm a keynote speaker, master of ceremony. There are a lot of people who are keynote speakers, who have a great story to tell, who are absolutely wonderful speakers, paid speakers. But the speaking space is equally crowded. A lot more people are getting into being fee-paid speakers at different levels, different places, inevitably creating competition. Why should I pay you more than I pay somebody else? It's the same in consultancy. I've not won my own contracts based on my fee offer. I offer it based on my unique offer, and there's a difference. But that's a different story. I want to talk about work hard, play hard, and rest hard. So what I'm saying is I was just lining it up there to say to you, work hard, absolutely, you need to work hard to be not only staying ahead of or catching up with those others in your space. You then have to work to find what is your USP, what is your ultimate selling proposition? How are you positioned different to somebody else? Why should somebody pay you more compared to somebody else? What is your value? What are you giving the client, the customer? If you're a coach or a mentor, what are you giving that is different from any other coach or mentor that they can go to. We are living in a world of abundance. Abundance of thoughts and ideas. 
we have to work way harder than we had to even 20 years ago. Like I said, when I started my own consultancy. But then the key is, and this is what I want to get out of my chapter. It's about balance. I'm not a, I'm not a great believer in the work-life balance conversation. Because when I work, I love it. My family knows I love it. They love what they do. We all do things that make us work hard, but we love it. So work-life balance for me is a whole different conversation, which I'm not going to get into. But whatever you're doing, you're spending valuable hours on it. So once you've spent those valuable hours, well, what about how you play? It could be sports. It could be chess. It could be relaxing. It could be watching a documentary. It could be reading a book. That's a form of play. You may say, well, reading is actually resting. Well, it depends on how you look at it. If you're using the reading to fuel whatever the differentiating position is that you want to have, then it's maybe not quite rest, but it can be. That's a point we can argue at some other stage. So you play hard, you work hard, you want to play hard. And playing should not be on your own. Remember, this working environment involves your family involves your spouse, involves your children, involves your parents. Where are you in the constellation of everything else going on in that world? Play with them, enjoy the time with them, engage with them. Perhaps tell them what is going on in your work as well, so that they too can be a part of that. Give you their thoughts. My children are millennials. They're old enough, but even as growing up as teenagers, as I said, I'm in retail. So we'd go to a shopping center and I'd ask them what they think. For me, that is not work as such. That is more play. That is more recreational. So what do you think of this? I want to bring my client in here or from an intellectual point of view, what is it that you see as, as adolescence? And they would say what their thought was. And in certain situations, they've said it's absolute rubbish for this, 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 and this reason. They're not my centers. I didn't design them, but I want them to be a part of what I do so they understand engage with them. And then, of course, we come to the rest part. And resting is as valuable, in fact, it's invaluable to be able to rest, to take time off, time away from the hard work that you're putting in. And what I would do is, for example, on vacation, our family vacations in the summer, when the kids were younger, we would go off and I would not take any calls, maybe on the exceptional odd occasion, even when I was in corporate, I take the odd call, but my boss and bosses, they knew that that is my sacred time. I ring fence that in such a way that nobody could get in. And even today, it's the same thing. So you have to rest in the environment of your children, your parents, your spouse, whatever it happens to be. Learn to rest, learn to unwind, learn to chill, learn to breathe, learn to do other things that are not part of work. So the purpose of this is really to say, work hard, play hard, rest hard, because through that process, you actually get stronger. You actually get much more fit to do what you want to do. And at the end, one of the action items that I leave is, it's actually a critical thinking question, which is one of those things that I have in the book as well. What do you expect the benefits to be from doing this? So from work hard, play hard, rest hard, that rest hard in particular. What do you expect the benefits to be from doing this? List them out and reflect on them. So don't just think abstractly. My key with this book is it's a workbook. My key is to say, take these, make notes, jot down ideas and thoughts for yourself, and then use them as a springboard for what you want to do in your next stages in your career. So I hope this has resonated with you, left you with some thoughts and ideas. If it has, please feel free to like, comment and share. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available. And in the meantime, I wish you all the very best and great success as you rest during this week or this day or whenever you actually look at this video. Thank you.